hear that cultural diversity in business comes with many advantages, from team effectiveness to creativity. But how do the cultural backgrounds of teams interact to produce these effects? Su Jin Zhang is a professor of organizational behavior at INSEAD. She's done a paper on this, and she's here to help us illuminate this cultural black box. Su Jin, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, so first of all, tell us a little bit about what motivated you to pursue this topic. So a very common dilemma for multicultural teams is that on the one hand, because they're very diverse, they have the potential to be more creative, to be more innovative, to be more effective. Um, but on the other hand, that same diversity can stand in the way of them performing well because of differences in assumptions and norms and values among team members. So what I found in my research is that when organizations bring together people from diverse cultural backgrounds, these different individuals are not navigating these cultural differences among team members in isolation, but they're doing so in an interactive process. And specifically, certain individuals emerged as cultural brokers, and they tended to be the ones with more multicultural experience. So whether that's from living in or working in different cultures, they were people who had relatively more cross-cultural experience compared to their team members, and they were helping the other team members navigate and manage cultural differences. So what did your study show us about how the cultural backgrounds of teams interact? People who had a multicultural background, so people who had either lived in a different country um, than their country of origin or had worked across cultures, they tended to be the ones who kind of took up this cultural brokerage role and they would emerge as cultural brokers. So they would help these monocultural members navigate their cultural differences. So by what mechanism then did these teams become more creative when they had a multicultural broker at the helm? So the multicultural brokers influenced the dynamics of the teams, such that when there was a broker, the team members would interact with one another in a different way. And what was interesting was that I found that there are two different types of cultural brokerage, and that different um, types of cultural brokers, based on their cultural background relative to the other team members, they would primarily engage in one type of brokerage or the other. So on the one hand, there were people whose own cultural background matched the cultural backgrounds of their team members. So for example, if we take our two campuses, uh, let's say you have a team where some team members are French and other team members are Singaporean. Um, someone who has deep knowledge of both Singaporean and French cultures would in this case be a cultural insider to the team. So what I found was that when there was a cultural insider, they would help the team by integrating the different knowledge, information, and resources on behalf of the team to help them arrive at a more creative outcome. On the other hand, there were some multicultural individuals who engaged in cultural brokerage, even though their own cultural background didn't overlap with any of the other team members. So these individuals I call cultural outsiders. So for example, if we think about the same team of French and Singaporean team members, this might be someone who has experience in and knowledge of two completely different cultures, say Argentina and Korea. But I found that they're still able to help the team, but in a different way from cultural insiders. So these cultural outsiders tended to help the team by eliciting different information, eliciting ideas. So um, why is it that multicultural members of teams naturally emerge as cultural brokers? So some people said they feel a sense of responsibility given their diverse um, cross-cultural experiences when there's an opportunity to help others that they feel compelled to do so. Some of them said they also feel that there's an expectation among their teammates or colleagues that you know, given their diverse cultural experience that they would help them navigate cultural differences. There were some people who also said that this can be a boost for their career. But what I was really struck by was that many, many people talked about sort of the intrinsic motivation to do this. So they talked about how they learn a great deal from engaging in cultural brokerage. Many of them used the word um, enriched, that it enriched their lives to engage in this type of cultural brokerage and to help other people work through differences. So what can managers or organizations do to facilitate cult cultural brokerage? So what I've learned from my research is that engaging in cultural brokerage can be incredibly difficult and taxing. So to the extent that organizations or managers can help potential cultural brokers engage in brokerage, um, so for example, this might mean putting them in a position of power relative to the other team members, so that when they engage in cultural brokerage, the team members will be more receptive. Um, it could also mean just creating more time and space for cultural brokerage to take place. And what can be helpful is for organizations to simply recognize that when you bring together a team of people from different cultural backgrounds, 
You know, they're not going to necessarily agree on the best way of working together. They're not going to have the same set of assumptions or norms or values, and that it takes more time and more deliberate effort to bring people on the same page. And having someone who can engage in cultural brokerage can help the team get there. Sujin, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm.